SwiftUI's so at state property wrapper is designed to store simple data that's local to the current view. But as soon as you want to try and share some data, you've got to take some important extra steps. Let's break this down with some code. First things first, here's a struct to store some user data. We'll say as a first name property, I'll use Bilbo and a last name property, I'll use Baggins. Now we can use this thing inside a Swift UI view by using at state. So I might say at state private var user is a new user. We can then make a VStack with various things inside. For example, I might say this VStack here has a text uh, view here saying your name is, and I'll do user.firstName and then user.lastName, like so. But because it's state, I can get a binding to these values. I can say, give me a text field for your first name with text bound to dollar user dot first name and the same thing for last name like this and like this and that all works i can press command r run the code back and see how it looks there's bilbo baggins i'll change bilbo here to be frodo and you can see as i'm typing ignore xcode silly log messages in the background you can see it's updating frodo baggins up here and in the text view so SwiftUI is smart enough to understand that this one object contains all our data and will automatically update the UI when either value, first name or last name, changes. Now, behind the scenes, what's actually happening is every time this value is changing in here, the whole struct changes, okay? It's like a new user every time we type a key, first name or last name again, again, again. That might sound wasteful, but it's actually extremely fast. Previously, we looked at the difference between classes and structs, and there were, I believe, two important differences I mentioned to you. First, structs always have one unique owner, owned by exactly one thing, whereas classes, multiple things can point to them at the same time. They can share owners, and that's fine. And secondly, classes don't have to have the mutating keyword with methods that change their properties because you can change properties of classes easily. In practice, what this means is if we have two SwiftUI views and we send them both the same struct to work with, each will have a unique copy of that struct. If one changes it, those will not be appearing in the other version. They're independent copies of the same data. On the other hand, if we have an instance of a class, then send it to both views, both will share the same data. Now for Swift UI developers, this means if we want two or more views to share the same values, if we want to have the same data being pointed to in multiple places, then we've got to use classes rather than structs. So I want you to change struct user to be class user. And now run the program again and see what you think. I'll change Frodo here to be, or Bilbo to be Frodo. And as you can see, it doesn't work anymore. It's still saying your name is Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, I am typing into the text box here or here. That much is working, but the text view above is not changing. When we use at state here, we're asking SwiftUI to watch a property for changes. So we change a string, flip a Boolean, append to an array, whatever, that property has changed. The whole body of our view will be reinvoked with a new data inside. And when our user object was a struct, every time we modified any property inside the struct, Swift was actually recreating the whole struct every single time. And so at state would go, aha, I spot that change, my value is changing, the whole struct is changing, I'd better reinvoke the view, reload with new, new values inside there. Now we've got a class and that behavior no longer happens. Swift modifies these values directly inside the constant class around it. So the class object itself is not changing, but the values inside are. Now remember, we had to use the mutating keyword for structs when we had a method that modified properties, okay? This is because if we make the struct properties 
as variable, but the struct itself as constant, we cannot change the properties. A constant struct makes the whole thing constant because Swift has to be able to destroy and recreate the whole struct when a property changes. That is not possible for constant structs. Classes don't have that same restriction. They don't have the mutating keyword at all. Because even if the class is marked as a constant, the properties are variable, they can still be changed inside a constant class instance. Now, I know you're thinking this sounds terribly theoretical, but here's the twist, right? Now, user is a class. The property itself, this one here is not changing. The values inside are changing, but this value here, user is not. And so the state property wrapper cannot spot the change, doesn't see anything, doesn't reload the view. Again, the values inside the class are changing, but state isn't designed to monitor those. It's designed to monitor this value right here. And so effectively, the values inside are being changed, but the view is not being reloaded to reflect that change. We can fix this with one small extra line of code. I want to add one thing before class user. We're going to write at observable. And now, if I press Command R again, our code will work correctly. I say it's not Bilbo, but Frodo. As you can see, it now works again. To understand why, we've got to explore what this at observable keyword actually is doing. 